Hey guys, Matt O'Shea here and today we're talking about how to take this photo and change it into something like this using Luminar 2018. Let's go! What's happening guys? Hope you're having a great start to your week. Hope you're getting out there snapping some photos or practicing some video techniques that you just picked up. But most importantly, you're enjoying the art of creating because at the end of the day, that's why we do this. This past weekend, I had a chance to go hiking up to a lake and I've been there before, but I've never actually seen an aerial shot of the surrounding location. So I decided to bring the drone up, snap a few shots, see what I got. In this raw photo that you're seeing, the lake is actually blown out and reflecting the sky. Now, if I had more time and clarity of thought, I totally would have put a polarizer on, but it slipped my mind. So in today's video, I want to teach you guys how I go about editing my photos. I've specifically chosen this photo because it's got a lot of problems with it. So my hope is that it's encouragement to you to go back to your old photo library, whether it was a problem with composition, exposure, maybe you forgot your circular polarizer, and you recover some of those shots and just bump up some of those photo techniques that you got. And I'm gonna have the raw photo and the Luminar project file in the download link in the description below so that you guys can download the photo and give it a try yourself. All right guys, so let's jump into it. Right now I've got Luminar open with the raw file and typically I use the professional workspace. Now fair warning, I'm gonna be cruising through this photo editing. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but the main purpose is just to give you guys different ideas on how to experiment with your photos and see what works for you. Right off the bat, white balance is pre-populated when you shoot raw, so I'm happy with these settings as they are right now. Exposure, you'll see that nothing is clipping on the highlights or on the shadows, so let's move on to contrast. Contrast, I'll usually bump up to around about 30, 34 or so. We're going to need to adjust the highlights in this photo because the water's reflecting the sky, so ugh, next time I'm bringing a polarizer. Let's go ahead, bring that down, and I'm actually going to bring it all the way down. In shadows, I'm going to boost up probably to 16 looks, uh, 20 looks pretty good right there. For whites, I'm going to bring this all the way down and this is just going to help with the lake once again. You can see that there. Blacks, I'll reduce probably to minus 30 or so. Saturation and vibrance, let's boost this up to about 15 or so and that's going to really help bring out some of this blue and light turquoise in the lake as well as the greens around here in the trees. And scroll all the way down once you get to polarizer filter and because we didn't have a polarizer filter we've got to bump this up so we're going to crank that all the way up to 100. Once again this is specific only to this photo. Let's head back up and go to our advanced contrast. Now our advanced contrast, we're going to boost this amount up quite a bit. Um, this is also going to help with that lake. Midtones, we're going to bring up. And we're going to put the balance to minus 65 or so. That looks pretty good. Shadows, let's increase this. And we'll bump that up to about 17 or so. And now down to the curve. So let's do the S curve that everybody always does. <laughs> Once again, this is just adding a little bit of contrast and this is going to help our image pop. Let's actually just dial in these highlights a little bit more. Now we're going to go down to the hue, saturation, and luminance. And this is one of my favorite filters in Luminar. This is like the secret sauce or the holy grail that I use in all my photos to take it from a, hmm, that looks good, to a, whoa, what'd you do? So we're going to start with some of the yellow here. And as you can see in the image, some of the treetops are a little bit yellowy. So we're going to adjust that so that it matches a little bit more with our scene. Green. Now this is going to be huge in terms of altering our image to have that kind of nice evergreen look. And this photo was taken in spring, so it's not as though the trees are super lush right now. So we're gonna alter this hue so that it appears more like a summertime photo. So you can see if we go to the left here, now we're looking more fall. And if we go to the right, yeah, now we're dialing in that kind of evergreen look. So already the photo's looking a lot more like it's summertime. And next up, what we're going to do is alter the aqua. 
Minus 22 is good there. And blue, we're gonna adjust so that it fits in with the aqua a little bit better. If we go to the right, it's gonna look like a Superman blue. If we go to the left, it's gonna actually appear more like the aqua that we had, kind of a tealish blue. Next up, luminous. Now, because the focus of our attention is the lake and the surrounding trees, we wanna boost the, the contrast in between those trees and the lake. So what we're gonna actually do is boost our yellows because these treetops have that yellow hue, right? So let's bump it up a little bit and you can see they're already getting a little bit brighter. So let's go with that. That looks, actually maybe bring it down just ever so slightly. And so we're gonna adjust our green to be a little bit darker, adding more contrast to the center of the scene. Aqua, we're gonna end up bumping up. Once again, this is because it's in the center of the scene. This is what we want to draw our viewer's attention towards. And with blue, I'm actually gonna reduce the luminance values on it. And I've actually just gone back up and I've adjusted the green to minus two here. And the reason for that is looking at the overall composition, I'm not happy with how there's kind of this dead area right here. It's kind of dead space. So we wanna fill that up and put some trees in it using our clone stamp tool. Go under tools, clone stamp, and with our source, what we're gonna do is adjust our size down to about, say, 40% or so, and our softness, let's bring that down to 60%. That looks good right there. We're gonna select a source where there's tons of trees to draw from, so right here, and we'll draw on our trees. Now, once we get to right about here, we wanna be conscious of these trees. So let's go ahead and select this source and kind of draw on, you'll notice the source right here is now off to the right hand side where there's another set of trees. We're gonna draw this on too. And that's good enough. So let's go ahead, click done. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing but for the lake. Now you can see that we've cleaned up the lake as much as possible, but now we've gotta basically take things into our own hands and clone stamp again. And in here, we're gonna to wanna to get real close. That way we can select our source correctly. So what we're gonna do is just go from right to left. Let's bump up the softness here. size. Let's select our source. Let's just draw along here. And we're just going to work our way along here. Once you get to about here, you're just going to want to be conscious of getting rid of as much of this reflected sky area. And so now we're gonna do a little bit more fine detail. So we're gonna go down to about 70 or so. I'm gonna select these teal areas and kind of help fill in, add a little bit more texture to what's going on here. So as you can see, this clone stamp by no means is perfect, but it really helps kind of sell this image a little bit more. And looking at it before and after first glance, you're not really gonna be able to tell so much that it's clone stamped, especially once we start adding in a few more effects. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the filter structure. And with structure, what we're gonna do is select a brush because we're gonna paint on a mask. Let's turn the size down ever so slightly. And also let's reduce our softness. Probably to 80% would be good. And so we're going to draw this mask on and we can actually just go ahead here and click. So you'll see that we're basically painting on a mask here of structure. And this is gonna help blur out some of that water so it looks like we had a longer exposure 
when we were taking this photo. So let's go ahead, bring that amount down to minus 78, and then do about 77 on both. The next filter that we wanna add is remove color cast. So we're gonna click on that. And what we wanna do here is we wanna remove this kind of cloud-like um, artifacts that we're getting from the clone stamp. So what we're gonna do is select method number two. We're gonna bump up that amount and you can see that that's, that kind of cloudy look is starting to go away. So that's perfect. Look at that, unbelievable. Probably about 32 to 35 is where I'd like it. That's really helping along these areas. Two more filters that we're gonna add, the first one being image radiance, so get that brush out. We're gonna turn this up to probably about 50% or so, increase the smoothness to 45, increase brightness to about eight, bump up those shadows, 48 or so. You can already see it's starting to look really good. But just for the cherry on top, we're gonna to click on soft light. And last but not least, we're gonna add a vignette. Close out these filters. We're gonna go minus, I'd say minus 60 or so. And this is gonna help with where we ended up cloning some of those trees. And let's now check out the before and the after. Before, after. Unbelievable, what a difference. All right guys, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks for photo editing. I'd be curious to see what your thoughts are. Would you do anything differently? Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I've got tons more content coming and I'm actually gonna be doing a 100 subscriber giveaway. I don't know if that's ever happened, but I'm gonna do it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Poof.